How do you think the federal government should handle illegal immigration? How does the Cuban ask me that question? <laughs> 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 well, to, to any Hispanic, and I, I hate that term Hispanic, I am an American of Cuban descent. Okay? I am not a hyphenated American. Uh, that's one thing I want to say. You would be hard pressed to find another person stand in this position, in this room, in this state, in this country that loves America as much as I do. It's just not possible. I defy other people to challenge that. I adore my country. I adore its culture. I adore everything about it. However, I must also say that I really do like uh, black beans and black rice and uh, chicken and rice. The way my, my wife makes it just like my mother used to. Immigration. Seal the borders, first and foremost. Don't continue the process. Don't, let's not go down the same road that Ronald Reagan went down. Seal the borders. Let's not ever begin or end the discussion without first saying that, that the flow of humanity that's coming into this country must be stopped. And that's one of the things that has to happen. The second thing that I will tell you is, is that we must eliminate the incentives that we have created. We created it. How did we do that? Well, we pay people to stay home and not work. Now, listen, I work. I, I own a market in Black Rock. I work seven days a week. At one point in my life, my wife and I worked 100 hours a week to make our business grow to the point that we don't work that much now. But we certainly work more than 40 hours. Okay? I believe in hard work, and I believe in the rewards of hard work. That said, Let's put all Americans that are waiting at home for a check to come from the government back to work. When they go back to work, there will be less jobs available for people to come and illegally immigrate. Second, the other incentive that we created as a nation is that we paid illegal immigrants for their benefits. So they can go into our hospitals, they can use our schools, they can use our schools of second, uh, secondary education, and college. You know, it's some of the things on the lower grades, I think that we have to swallow hard and take that. But college, come on. Let, let's, let's be fair here. American citizens have to pay. I pay now, just today, twice as much for my children to go to college than I do for my own mortgage. I'm paying for that. You know, that people need to learn to pay for what it is that they get. So those are two incentive programs that we created for illegals to come to this country. Let's eliminate those. And then lastly, I think that we need to be realistic. At the end, when, our, when we have full employment, all of the Americans that are available to work are working to the best of their ability. Then there's going to be a delta. Okay, that's economics term. Um, and that delta is the number of people that we actually need to employ that could not be filled by Americans. And that means that we have to have a, an immigration policy that allows those people to come in and work. Um, lastly, to not dodge the question, because I could have dodged this one, okay? What do we do with the 12 million to 20 million, God knows the number, that we have here today? I think that we provide for them an unconventional uh, ability to stay. And what that means is that they are going to be treated differently than people that came here legally. And they will never receive the benefits of anyone that took the right road here, ever, until such time as they leave and apply to come in properly. I, I don't think that we owe anyone that's broken our laws anything other than that. I think that's that's more than benevolent. Uh, but giving them amnesty, I mean, that, that would be a drastic mistake because what we will have done effectively is to provide for the next round of people to come here illegally. Let's not do that ever again. What role, Rick, do you believe the federal government should play in education? As uh, no role at all. No role at all. Um, I come from Bridgeport. I wanted to be <coughs> mayor of my city. One of the principal reasons that I wanted to be mayor is because I do believe that education can help people out of their plight. 
Um, what I will tell you is that all of these suburban folks are paying for a system that basically maintains a lot of people in employment positions that shouldn't be there in the educational system. And frankly, I'll tell you this, it's not the teacher's fault. Okay? I'm not one of these people that's going to stand up here and blame teachers. It's not their fault. They are given an impossible situation to repair with an impossible budget. Even though there's enough money coming in, it never gets to the kids or the teacher. Okay? So what I would say is, uh, from the educational standpoint, as little as possible. But from a federal standpoint, which is the office that I'm running for, I would say the government has no role to play in education whatsoever. <coughs> what is your stance on congressional term limits? I am in favor of term limits. And you know why it's a good question? I'll tell you why it's a good question. I love my home. I love my market. And I beg you all to come down to my market and have a cup of coffee on me. I, that sounded like a fraud. Forget that. <laughs> 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 let's, let's, let's erase that part. <laughs> um, maybe you'll pay for your cup of coffee. But what you'll find at my store is a really decent American store. Okay? It's a great place. People love my place. Liberals come to my place. Moderates, you know, people like me, all the way on the right hand side of the scale. And what's great about it, it's very welcoming. Black Rock, to me, in my area where I live, represents one of the best things in my life. It is. I, that's not lying. So when I tell you, I don't really want, this is my, my um, campaign manager might shoot me right now, I don't want to leave my home. But I'm compelled to serve. Because I think America needs people that love their homes that want to defend freedom and defend America for the decency that it's provided me. It has been so generous to me. You know, I want to make sure that America continues in perpetuity into the future forever. But I don't want to stay there. I want to do my role. I want to serve my time, just like our military men and women go and serve their time in war. I want to serve my time in Congress. But you know what? It's supposed to be painful. And that's one way that it'll be painful. And now that the camera is on me, I make you this vow and this promise. I'm going to pay for my own health insurance. I pay for it now. I don't need federal government. But I want the money. You know where I want the money? I want to give it back to Connecticut residents. I want to make sure the Connecticut residents get a tax rebate from the money that I will save them by not taking that, that subsidy from the federal government. And I don't want a retirement plan from the federal government. And my wife might kill me for that one. But I don't want it. It's not supposed to tell it. Benjamin Franklin said this explicitly. The minute that we put profit into the role of government, it's the day that we lose control of government for the people. It becomes government for the profit of the individual. I don't want to lose myself. I don't want to lose myself up there with all of these enticements to become a traditional congressman. I don't want to do that. So term limits, absolutely, yes. I'm not entirely sure how many years yet. You know, I'll, I'll ask you for your help on that. Maybe you can tell me the answer. But also, no health care. I don't want it. I pay for my own now. I'll continue to pay for my own. And lastly, and this is the hardest one, half pay. I'll take half pay of every other congressman. And I, believe me, I could use the money from the standpoint of my family. But I think I'm supposed to feel the pain of going to Washington. It's supposed to hurt me from the standpoint so that I never forget what made this country great, so that I never forget who I work for, which is you, and not big industry, not big capital, not anyone else, the people of Connecticut. That's why I want to do that. And I just said it on camera, so I can't take it back. <laughs>